Thank you, Mary. As uh, Mary has said, my name is Jamil Kanampio. I work for Kagrik and uh, I'm in charge of breeding section, which is under the directorate of uh, research and technical services. Are you able to see me? Yes, Anampi, we are able to see you. Kindly proceed. So I proceed, eh? Now, as it has been said, today I'm going to do a presentation on uh, Sir Catalog Interpretation, which I'm just going to go through a presentation, uh, which I'm going to, um, I'm just rolling it up. Eh? Yes, we can see your presentation, Mr. Nampu. Thank you. Uh, we okay. can now see your screen. Yeah, so um, so I will go straight to the topic of today. And uh, First of all, I want us to understand what is a, a bull or a sire catalog. A sire catalog is basically a book, which is as illustrations and it contains details on the item on sale. In this case here, we are talking about a bull. So this is just a simple information which you can get from any dictionary. It has as these illustrations, and the details uh, on the pedigree information of that particular bull. And that information also includes performance and genetic information. And therefore, you find that most of the information on the, in the bull catalog or sire catalog is the performance evaluations. So when you get a catalog right from the top, you'll possibly see a photograph, which is just an illustration. You will then get details of its name and below there you normally find pentagon information. And below that, the, the bulk of the information you find in a catalog is basically the information on performance evaluation of the board. Uh, so it would be difficult to understand a bull catalog if you don't know how to interpret this information or how to understand this kind of information. As I've said, pedigree information that is very clear because it, is, it shows us the parentage of that particular individual. But this part of the performance evaluation is what carries the barrack of the catalog. And this is where we have a lot of acronyms when I mean when presenting that information in the catalog. And this is where most of us has the problems in understanding. Therefore, today I feel it will not be possible to understand this catalog without understanding what is genetic evaluation. And the genetic evaluation is basically a prediction for the gains that could be derived by the use of selected individuals. In this case, if you are talking of a male and a female in any breeding program, what are the gains are you going to derive if you select particular individuals for breeding purposes? Therefore, that is basically what is genetic evaluation. You can also define it as a process of determining the breeding value estimate or the genetic merit of an individual in any breeding program. This is a process which was started long term ago in some countries like in the US, 1935. 
And what necessitated the, 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 the need for genetic evaluation is because uh, people are waiting to see results of how Bura, a certain bull has performed. You could go through the check through the fence, you find that the progenies of a particular bull is being used by your neighbor is doing very well, or they look nice, they look beautiful, stylish. And then you, you would be interested now because of having seen that, the need to use that particular bull. So by the time you are going to use a particular bull, time has passed on. And therefore, uh, farmers felt that there was a need to ever do it so that you can bleed from an informed information of what a particular bull is good for. So it is basically a tool for genetic improvement. Genetic evaluation is basically a statistical procedure calculated using the animal model, a process called, a program called best linear and bias prediction is one of the system which is used to evaluate the bulls. And basically is in any production system, you find that production of a particular individual is actually equal to the and average of that particular population, plus the genetic merit, and then the environmental effects. Therefore, if you really wanted to generate that genetic merit, you have to get rid of, you have to make sure you handle the environmental effect so that you can be able to see and, uh, what is the production of that particular individual. And therefore, this statistical method takes care of those environmental effects and it gives you the genetic merit of that individual. This combines information from the genetic merit of the parents. When you know parents' performance, you can possibly predict to a certain degree of how the progenies will be. So I know I am I'm assuming when I talk about progenies, you understand them. Eh? Those are the daughters in this case of, of Burukas. So progenies. Therefore, you can be able to predict the performance of the daughters to a certain degree based on the genetic merit of the parents. And that is actually what you have done when you are selecting the parents in the first place. Therefore, this first performance of the parent is what you call the parental averages. And this one forms the, the first information you need to determine the performance of a particular individual. Therefore, when performances of progenies come in, then of course, they improve the reliability of the information, the confidence with the, of the information, and also BRAP, takes care of relative performance. So the way a brother of a particular bull is doing as an effect or that information contributes, you can be able to, to say with the confidence that this bull, because the brother is doing so and so and then it means this bull is also good. And all this helps us to come up with a pretty good estimate, but the reliability is low. Therefore, if the performances of the progenies is not there, you can predict that to the ability of that to that two percent. Therefore, when progeny results, this result of one daughter's performance comes in, then you have now more confidence to say, if I use this particular sire, this is what I'm going to get because the reliability goes higher and it can go as high as 99 percent depending on the number of daughters involved in that standard and the distribution, how many hands are there? Because hands have got the different management and you would want to see uh, how the, the daughters express themselves in different environments because environment plays a key role in the determination of the genetic merit of an individual. But the only problem is progeny tests resort 
takes almost five years because you need to use that bull, the semen of that bull to a particular cow. That cow gives, takes the pregnancy for nine months, gives birth to a aifa, which takes almost uh, 18 months to mature. It is served, carries the pregnancy of nine months, uh, calves down, milks for about uh, three or five days for you to be able to use that information to assist in the evaluation. So you see, you are almost taken five years. Yes. 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 Okay. 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 Sorry for that. Now with the all the because there's a lot of disabled. I don't know from which hand. Now from. Going by this uh, period taken, therefore, you find that there's a lot of waiting and there's a lot of understandings when it comes to the breeding, breeding because you have to wait to see the performance of a bull uh, for you to be able to make informed decision on whether to use them or not. That's where now genomics has come in, which has currently an, a, a reliability of about 75%, 77%. And this one, you are able to, ever, to, to evaluate a calf, even when it is just one month old, for you to be able to, to predict the worthiness or the breeding value of that particular individual. Therefore, combination of uh, progeny test result plus supported by genomic evaluation, this one, uh, they are going hand in hand because Information based on genomic evolution, as you see, is going up to 77%, but with the progeny test, you can go as high as 99%. So the higher, when you have an 89%, the ability, it means when you use that particular pool, you are actually going to get exactly what is in the, the, the data which is available there. Yeah, you are, you are assured. But when the figures, the percentages are lower, then it can take either direction. It can either be that way or the other way, positive or negative. Now, what are the traits evaluated basically in any uh, genetic evaluation? Here we are talking about production traits. That is the amount of milk produced, butterfat content, weight, butterfat weight, protein, and so forth. And also the um, type traits. Therefore, they are with the genomics now, you are able to come up with other indexes, especially the selection indexes, where we are going to talk about them further on. The yield traits is what I've just mentioned. Then, of course, now there are other traits like carving ease, carving traits, type traits. There are 17 linear conformation traits which are normally evaluated. We have the health traits, which are very becoming very important now through genomics. You find that some of these traits, they were there all along from the indexes which were developed a long time ago. But then some of them, they were taking a lot of uh, time and data to be able to come with this meaningful information. But with the advents of genomics now, some of these traits are able to be captured faster. Of course, they also look for genetic conditions. That bull, we have to be told, does it pass over any genetic defect, which could be in the recessive form or not? And then, of course, they have also come up haplotypes. These are genetic or uh, uh, the, the, the effects which are also affecting fertility. And then the type of milk, which is the protein in the milk, which is, uh, being, uh, is becoming important these days. Therefore, these are basically, when you look at every bull catalog now, you find all this information in there. Now, predicting transmitting ability. 
this is now the it's a normally defined define as the average genet genetic value for treats that an animal is expected to transmit to the offsprings. So when we do genetic evaluation, we are actually predicting the genetic value that an animal is expected to transmit to the offsprings. And this is just a way of ranking animals for their genetic merit. And as we said from the beginning, it takes consideration genetic merit of parents, individual performances, and the progeny performance records. So it takes all this together to be able to come up with the, the prediction. It is actually the, the best estimate to, for predicting the value of a bull because uh, it takes care of performances from the daughters and uh, that one becomes very, uh, the, the best way you will be able to predict the value of a, a bull because the bull, as you know, is not producing milk. So it will depend on all these other factors you have put up with. And it's normally a half the breeding value of a bull. You find that in some document or catalog, some of them uh, refer to breeding value estimates. And then here we are talking about predicting transmitting ability. So the two should not confuse you. Yeah, because PTA will be half of the breeding value of an animal. So where, where PTA, day, for example, is indicated as 400, then the breeding value will be 800. And the PTA, predicting transmitting ability is normally the, the deviation from the population average, right? So if a, if a population uh, average is, let's say, for example, uh, 4,000 kgs of milk, yeah, so, you need to find you, you need to find out what is the deviation there and back. It can either be positive or negative. So therefore, if you say you are using a bull which is going to which has got a predicted transmitting ability of so much units, it means it is above that population average. And therefore, the population average is normally the genetic base. Uh, And therefore, genetic um, base, this one keeps on changing from time to time. In some countries, you find that they review the genetic base every five years, others do every year. So that they keep on, depending on the, the way the population performance is improving, genetic improvement of the population, they keep on changing it so that they can have some meaningful and manageable figures to work with. Now, another common term we need to understand before we, we go to the catalog interpretation is, uh, as I said, is the breeding uh, value. As defined there, it is estimation of the genetic merit of an animal for a certain trait, and uh, it is normally estimated indirectly from measurable phenotypic values. That is uh, like phenotypic traits here is basically like the the production, yeah? And as I, I will, we said, therefore, a half of the breeding value is actually equal to the PTA. And the, the standard length of adaptation is taken as the of 5 internationally, so that we can be able to manage these uh, predictions properly in a, with a constant uh, figure. And uh, it also takes, the other, the other traits we are talking about here is a protein uh, and the weight in adaptation, fat, and all that. In genetic base, this is a different point used to express the PT of an animal for a trait in a difference. All PTs are, are, expressed, are expressed as deviation from the genetic base. And this is normally the reference 
the mean average of the reference population. For example, like Kagrig, when we do our, our genomic evaluation, we are using the reference population of a different country. So it is important to know when you find the figures which we post in our catalog based on, the, on uh, animals which have been evaluated through genomics, you can now be able to understand that the, 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 that prediction which we normally post there is actually based on a reference population of a different country. Another important uh, definition here, which is uh, a terminology which will be useful to us in understanding the catalog is reliability. As I said, it is the measure of accuracy of the PTS value, and it is normally put in percentages. This shows how much confidence that can be placed in an evaluation. And it depends on information available. Therefore, if the more than data, the higher the reliability. And the, the more than distribution of that, the way where that data is been corrected, the better because of the environmental factors. You don't want to work with data from only one farm. Maybe the management there is fantastic. Yeah. So maybe the animals are performing very well because of a um, very conducive environment. So it becomes, we need more different environment for us to be able to get the genetic merit of uh, those individuals. Therefore, when you have raw reliability, it means there's a likelihood of change. Yeah, so when the reliability is raw, chances are that when you get more information, it can either be positive or negative. But when the reliability is very high, up to 98, 99%, there's no change. There's less likelihood of change. You are sure of 30%. Yeah, so uh, therefore, you find that when you have that and daughters distributed in that hands, you can confidently say that information is 70% reliable, for example, for, for milk. 50 daughters spread in 50 hands will give you a 80% reliability. 95% and above, you are not expecting to have any change. So when uh, you find the reliability, any information in the catalog with a reliability of 95% and above, chances are that that information will not change, it will remain the same if you use that particular sire. So as we have said, uh, genomic evaluation, uh, genomics is another new uh, method of genetic evolution, which involves the DNA sampling to, to analyze to establish which genes, analyze that to establish which genes are present, that they may be expressed by the animals. It is faster and more accurate. This is now the whole world is going through this direction. They don't want to wait for five years to see the performance of uh, the daughters of a bull. It is helping the farmers to make a decision early in life so that the bull can be used when it is still young. And it also helps the farmers to decide which individual do they have to retain on the farm. If they find that a certain AFA has got poor genetic uh, and genomic results, then you don't have to keep that one. So they are only keeping animals for uh, which are valuable or are going to be of use to their, in their hands. They don't want the joyriders. Therefore, this was genomic uh, evolution was developed because of that kind of, uh, I mean, because of the problems farmers were going through. Maintaining an AFA for up to two years, and when it comes down, the performance is not as good as we're expecting. Therefore, scientists had to do a lot of research and they came to realize that they, and they worked from the known information 
they went to the animals which are, who are performing good, who are performing very well, and they tried to stand their DNA to, to because they knew this, this, the, the, this animal which performs so well must have a good uh, genetic information. Just like the way the, the, the farmers talk there, out there in the farms, they say, he, this animal has got a gene for uh, a lot of milk. Mm -hmm. So they went now looking for that gene. Where is this gene? They knew it must be somewhere. And so they studied the DNA and they found that and learned that certain cones in specific uh, means a certain cones around the DNA, the DNA meant, um, meant some specific uh, information. And therefore, they used proven bulls with official marine values and they genotyped it and they compared the two and they and so as to establish the relationship between the DNA of, the, of a particular good bull, which has got good a project tested result and they found there was a relationship. So the DNA was compared with the actual performance of thousands of uh, progenies over many years and they came to find there was a relationship. And therefore, uh, with enough information, uh, they realized that there was a relationship between some markers in particular points around the DNA the era is this one and uh, meaning. So they made sleep markers uh, of those relevant traits to bearing only, and they developed a chip kit. And sleep markers, these are single nucleotide polymorphisms. These are just a kind of the arrangement of the, of the basis of the DNA. Because individuals are all the same. If it is a cow, they are the same. But then they realize that when we have some kind of reorganization, so that you have these polymorphisms, you find that those animals, uh, that's what it makes the animals look different anyway. Cows are all the same, bulls are all the same. But those differences is what makes individual different. So this animal is producing more milk, they realize there are some specific areas around the DNA where we had uh, around the single the nucleotides, there are uh, polymorphisms, those interchanges of the basis. And that's what was producing different, uh, different diverse individuals. And so they developed this chip, which scans now the DNA to be able to determine exactly where those markers are. And then they developed a, a key which translates the sequence and converts them to genetic indexes. Therefore, when a, a DNA of a, you submit a DNA and it is, they know exactly where to go for that information. And then depending on how many markers there are, uh, you find that now every country has to develop its own index so that you know, if I have a thousand markers in a concentration in particular, what does that mean in terms of milk? So this is where the, you find the differences. You find that evaluation, genomic evaluation of uh, animals is all the same, but you find that every country has got its own index of interpreting that information. If you have a thousand markers, what does it mean? How much do we give or interpret or convert into the amount of milk that animal is going to produce, right? So that is where you find differences. Otherwise, the evolution is all the same. Therefore, um, to interpret now the, the sire catalog, one of the other terminology we always find is the standard transmitting abilities. You find that when the linear traits are evaluated, you find those traits are different. Some of them are in degrees. For example, if you are looking at the foot angle, 
talk about the degrees. If you are looking at the angles, feet angle, I mean the, the circling, you find that you are talking about the degree. If you are looking at the size of the animal, you are talking about the height of the animal. That one we measure in terms of uh, centimeters, right? So because of those differences, those traits which are measured in different units, they have to be standardized for them to have a, a meaning and for one to be able to do a presentation in a graphic form. So linear type traits, genetic evolution anomaly express as predicting transmitting abilities, same as for production. And each trait, as I have said, at its, has its own range. And therefore, we needed to standardize because there are different measurements. Some are in degrees, others in, in length, in height, and so forth. So you need to standardize them so that you can be able to present them in a graphic form. And therefore, that's why we talk of uh, the linear type traits are normally in standard deviation. And when they are standardized, the range of the standard transmitting ability value is normally six units. So we, uh, they are normally presented with six units and they have a base, what they call the mean urine, which is normally reflected as zero. So the average is zero. Just as the, the way we said PTA for production, the genetic base is normally zero. So when an animal posts a genetic value or predicted transmitting ability of let's say 200 kg, you find it will be indicated at plus, plus 200. If it is negative, you find that minus 200. That means when you use this bull, the effect on the totals will be minus 200. The same with, with the linear traits. The zero is the difference, is the average, right? So you want, they want to see on the positive side, three units, and on the negative side, below the average, three units. And therefore you find why they, they normally refer to six units is because you find that majority of the population will fall within three points, either negative or plus. Of course, there will be outliers. Some will be as high as higher nine, yeah, about seven. But you find that those are will be very few if you look at the barrel shaped and distribution curve. Therefore, another index which is of importance, which you are going to find in the XI catalog is the total performance index, TPI. Especially in the, in the US system, they talk about this. You go to places like Netherlands, is NBI, right? So US is TPI, Netherlands is NBI. Uh, in, in German, I think it's RZ, RSN or something, RZN, right? So this is just an index uh, where, where they have allocated the various values, different values depending on the, uh, the country, the population difference, population of each country. But this one is important to understand. When you find every country has got this one index, as I said, and that's why you find these acronyms. Therefore, what is this TPI? It is just a combination of several traits, which have been combined into one index to rank bulls on their ability to transmit and balance of traits. This is just an index which has been, been made for farmers to make it their life easier when it comes to determining which uh, sire to use, All right? Depending on your objective of your farm. You find that most of those countries, uh, uh, I mean, they have got, let's say, so many bulls. And so if you want an unbalanced index, they are looking for, for information. They want to in, include uh, erod, erod trait. They want uh, production. So for you to have unbalance of all that, instead of, you know, because as you select, you find some of the traits have a, ne a negative effect, effect to another. 
there are those traits you can select and they, they, they combine that, they, they, they improve the individual in the difference because they are complementary. Others are negative to each other. Therefore, you will find that they have come up with an index to rank the bulls on their ability to transmit a balance of production and the type of tweet. It is a selection index based on a combination of traits that breeders feel are valuable and will enhance the overall quality of the breed. It comprises of 12 traits of economic significance in enhancing productivity. And basically here they emphasize on uh, 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 on traits that are valued, including that which includes production, fertility, because fertility is very important. If an animal can't produce enough milk, then you have no business keeping it there. Fertility, why? Is because if the animal can't conceive, then you find that you are going to be, it will not be coming once a year, and it means this animal will be kept on the farm, uh, eating for nothing. And I also you find hunger is very critical, because many animals are count from the hands because of hunger issues. Because if an animal, uh, uh, you know, mastitis is a very bad disease because you find uh, that you may find a cow going down the mastitis from day one. So that instead of a farmer milking uh, the first milk or even a colostrum, which goes to a calf, you find a vet is on your farm. Right, so and you see that one compromises the, the entire action. Mobility: if animals can't move around, then it means that they will not be able to be productive. Because if you are doing grazing out there, and the animals can't uh, in the open fields, if they can't move, then it means that they cannot uh, be of any use. And then calving is. You can imagine if you have a difficult calving one by you end up either losing the mother the calf or both. So they are put emphasized on all that and they come up with an balanced index which a farmer can be able to use. Therefore, if you find a catalog with a TPI number, the higher, the better, right? If you have a cow, a sire with let's say, an index of 2000, TPI of 2000, another one 17, 1500, I mean 700, what does that one tell you? The higher, the better. And the weighting of all these traits is that production will take 46%. So you can see the emphasis in this index, 46%. Error and fertility is normally given 28%. For information, 26% emphasis. Therefore, with all that, I think now I'm sure we are in a position to be able to to understand, to go through the SIA catalog for us to be able to understand it. Uh, here we are going to do an interpretation of a uh, genomic report because all the catalogs now, uh, they are being evaluated through genomics and all these traits are being captured, which initially they were not there. So when you find any catalog right at the top, as we said, is identification details of that board. Yeah. If it is a, um, in this case, therefore, uh, what we are saying is that the first light at the top is the name of the board and its body number. Those are the identities and maybe the blinder, all that could be there. And then uh, uh, the other. Um, defect that bull is a uh, destined agonist. You, you may have records of, uh, of uh, but I mean, uh, re, I mean uh, classification, for example. You may find it's classified. So you may find that information there. From the light at the top, as is in the collections and so forth. And then 
you will find in the catalog the selection indexes, as I said, the TPI and the net merit. Net merit is basically the value. In the US, for example, catalog, US catalogs, you find that uh, it is given in dollars, that is in money form. This is because it is the value of the farmer, uh, the, the value the farmer gives that particular animal on the farm. Because if it is animal which will be falling down in the mastitis all the time, then it, uh, it has no value because it is consuming what it produces. So it is the value depending on how trouble free that animal is on the farm. So if it's a trouble free animal, then you find it as a higher value. Then the unit traits. So you find that in genomic report that is normally in the, broken into all these, but the way the information might be presented in the catalog might be different. So I'm going to go through this, but as we go to the catalog, you'll find the, it's all mentioned up there. We shall talk about each one of them. So the yield traits are basically the amount of milk, the fat, protein, and even feed efficiency. Feed efficiency is also becoming very important trait. Uh, because they want to find out uh, animals which are just eating for nothing. Yeah, the amount of food, uh, how the, the conversion efficiency of uh, each individual. There are some animals which take a lot of feed to produce a particular volume of uh, milk, which if you give it to another different animal, it would produce even more. Heart here we are talking about daughter pregnancy rates, the DPR, fertility index. Uh, uh, then we find the, we are talking about the somatic cell counts or score. And then AFA curving rate. Then the curving traits, we are talking about sire curving is and daughter curving is. Type traits you will find in the catalog we have PTAT. This is predicting transmit ability of total traits, all the traits combined. This is not now one trait or one of the linear traits. It is all the linear traits combined. They have given us a, a total performance of all the traits combined. Then we have a composite. Composite. That is all the feet uh, linear traits brought together. And then the hand are composite brought together also. Then we have the genetic conditions, CVM, brand, precospina. And this one traits are normally uh, breed specific. You'll find that some of these. Uh, defect, you want to find them in, uh, for example, ashes like that. CBM is specific to Frisians, so you will not find them in, uh, in ashes. Then, aprotypes impacting fertility. This one are uh, normally up for Austin Frisian, they are abbreviated as HH1 up to six. And when they are tested free, when the animal is tested and found to be free, you find that they will abbreviate like HH1T. That means it is tested free. So, as we said, uh, net merit, uh, this one, a TPA we have talked about, net merit is a uh, estimate lifetime for a bit pro profitability of an animal, and that one we have talked about. And then the yield trait, we have also mentioned that. Now, having is, the sire having is is normally the tendency of calves from a particular sire to be born with ease. So when you find, because many farmers ask you for having is, what is it? It is the tendency of calves from that sire to be born with this from whichever cow it will be in subject to. And in the catalog, it is normally uh, 
it goes as much as as high as one to ten in some catalog you end up to square off but when you the lower the number the better so a one would stand for a normal carving a eight is up to up to eight you will find is a carving but anything above eight you have to be suspicious there are chances that you end up with difficulties, anything above eight, unless you have used on a, a good sizable uh, big animal, right? So anything above eight, that's why you know my ears, I'm an expert uh, saying that for this one, don't use on AFAS. But for mature cows, yes, because the, the carving is figure is more than eight. So when we fight uh, other I mean, carving ease of the DCE, which is normally found as DCE, that's a, the daughter carving ease, there's a tendency of daughters of bamboo to carve with ease. That is now uh, daughters which were born from a particular bull uh, have normally no issues when the carve is to carving. They are daughters of a particular animal which always have problems. They always have carving issues here and there. And so you see now they are able, they are able to tell yeah, through genomics, they can be able to talk about the sire carving is itself and its daughters. Then milk proteins, everybody is talking about this one now, casting A, A, B, B. And uh, he's all talking about the suitability for uh, cheese making, but they also say there is a milk which are good for in some particular population and also in the group. The error trait, you find the product price of an animal. You find in the, among the error traits in the catalog, you find PL. Productive life is normally uh, differenced as PL. It is the time the animal would stay on the farm as a productive animal. It is a measure of longevity. And this one, it is a standard deviation of minus seven to seven, right? And the, this one will also depend on the population, reference population. In some countries, like possibly the US, you find it's about five years, I think five, five years, so um, it's the average. And therefore, you go uh, age of the animals, and therefore, you find deviations between uh, five years and some other months, some going to six. And so, they will do that, those figures to tell you exactly. Uh, if you find now a minus, let's say seven, you can ensure that animal will leave the farm very early. Somatic cell count is called. It provides, an, it, it provides an indication of my, my chances of mastitis in both daughters. This is the only index whereby a row figure is better. As you have seen with all other indexes, we have said the, 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 the row, the, the figure, it is it's not good for us. But for somatic cell count, if it is lower, the better. So it ranges from 2.5 to 3.5, and therefore, when you have anything above 3.5, it means chances of getting mastitis are very high from those animals, the use of the, the, the those is highest. So the raw, the figure, this is the only index with a raw figure as the free fund uh, figure. Fertility index, the range is minus three to three, and the, this is a very important index as it is likely to tell you whether that particular animal has got is a carrier of any of the haplotypes affecting fertility. Therefore, if you find a minus two, for example, a minus three as an index, then if you look at the, the haplotypes, you are likely to find one of the haplotypes present, right? So this is a very critical index. Daughter pregnancy rate 
is an indicator of how quickly daughters of a certain sire comes back into it after calving. Yeah, there are some which calve down, and then uh, depending on the B B B B C S, they 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 stay for a very long time. Others will just come down and within 45 days to six days, they are shown it again. And you see now those kind of animals is what farmers want because they are, they, they are more, they'll be more productive with time on the farm. You find that just animals calve once every year because those which in today end up not making it to once in a year. Therefore, there are now uh, we have AFA conception rates. Uh, they, they are also doing that evaluation and also cow concept, uh, conception rates, right? So you are likely to see all this HCR, that is AFA conception rate, CCR, that is cow conception rates. Accurate, as I said, we have a final score which is normally uh, indicated in the catalog as PTAT. And it is a combination of all linear traits into one value. An estimation of most genetic priority for confirmation that above will transmit in the range is minus three to three, average zero. Therefore, when you find a bull with a, a PTA or PTAT of zero, or, and above, you find that chance and bull. Chances are that if you scan through now the, all the linear traits, you'll find that they could be all positive or just on average. And when you search a chance and bull, you don't have no, unless you are interested in a very specific areas you want to improve, especially for a particular area, let's say the under or so forth. Otherwise, PT alone, it tells you, uh, it gives you a quick reference on. Uh, whether to do that bull or not. Fit and right composite combines all linear traits into one value that helps breed long lasting and more profitable cows. And therefore, it is, it is a, com a combined index which is meant for foot and leg improvements. Under composite and index are based on ability for under improvement, combines the contribution of each trait for increased longevity at the under composite. And the under composite here, it is all the traits concerning the under brought together. That is the suspension development, teeth placement, teeth length, um, front hand attachment, the, the, the presence of the craft, the height of. Um, Attachment and all that, all that total is what combines to uh, under composite. The fit and leg composite basically is the, the foot angle, the, the, the securing, the side view uh, of the, the, the legs, the rear leg view, right? And how the locomotion, how the animal tracks, right? Does it track straight or not? So all that combined is what constitutes the fit and leg composite. So up to up prototypes, as I said, one to HH1 to six, that is for Austin Frisian. Then just this is normally JJ1 to three, they have ended to find three. But there are some studies which are saying some of these things usually have no direct effect. However, time will tell. The Asha has two up prototypes and the brown swiss has two and the upper types are basically a combination of uh, alleles found in the dna sequence at different location on a chromosome and they are normally transmitted together as a group they normally have a, a recessive mode of inheritance therefore you find that if you have an individual which has got uh, one of the upper types you need the partner, if this is a bull which under an upper type, you need to have the, the cow which will be served to also have a similar for them to be able to combine, to have an effect. Otherwise, it is normally 
uh, in the recessive form, there are no effect. But when they are, they are found in both parents, therefore they will end up with a, a problem. And that's why we have to be very careful with, we have to look at our catalog to ensure that we don't have this, this uh, prototypes, because if we introduce them to the population, you'll find them running on the, on the, on the bulls and also the cows, and eventually they will end up with the, uh, them becoming dominant. And what normally happens with aprotypes is that uh, this impacting fertility is that there is early embryonic death of the, of, the, of the conception. So you may find the, the embryo is absorbed, is dies at age 42, 42 days and is absorbed within the body. So you just find the animal after having been served 21, 30 days, no, no, 21 days, no sign, second round, two. Then after three months or so, you find it coming back again. Then you wonder what happened? I thought this animal conceived. So they cause um, um, uh, uh, that um, embryonic death, leading to more open days. And so you find that there's a lot of time wasting and so forth. So it's a big problem. Therefore, we shall now go to the bull catalog. And sorry. I don't know whether that one is clear. Now we. Yes, Mr. Nampi, it is clear. It is okay. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to present just a sample of a public bull catalog of a Frisian which has been evaluated through genomics. So the information here, here is based on genomic evaluation, right? And you see the need as to why we have to go into all those definitions and the genetic evaluation and trying to understand so that you can be able to understand this. Therefore, at the top here, you find the name of the bull and the code number. And as we said, remember we said illustrations. The bull is there, right? Uh, so that you can be able to see how it, it looks like. Yeah, it looks a very stylish, um, fancy bull. It has got a very good genomic evaluation. And as I said from the beginning, you find that our evaluations are not based on the Kenyan population, difference population, right? It is based on the US cattle population reference of the breed, that is the Austin Frisian of the US. And therefore, there are averages out there. I'm sure US is between 10 to 11,000 changes or American in three or five days tradition. Therefore, whatever figures you are going to see here, they are based on that. So if you find our cognitive bull here, which is genomically evaluated, testing a positive on milk, it means the PTA for milk being, let's say, positive 200, 300, that is above the genetic base of the US. So it means if this bull went to the US, it would be able to and used on the US cattle in that color, in that population, that is what they would do perform out there. Yeah. So it is important we understand that one from the, the one go. Now, from the illustration here, now you can see that that is a bull, and the below it is the pendigree information on the bull. There's a registration there, the father of this sire bull the dam and the extended pedigree, and of course the brinder. So this is just the information on the bull, then the, the identification basically. So we have dealt with the pedigree information, then we go to the performance. You remember like from the first slide we said, uh, all the other information about the sire is on performances. Now on the right side, of the, of the 
the, 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 the photo of the board is now the, the evaluations. Now, the first one is yield and health traits. And this one tells you the evolution was done in 2018, there about, if I'm seeing it right. And then you can see now the total performance index. The one we talked about is 1,835 with a reliability of 76%. Yeah, this is because we said genomics has now reached the 70, 70, I think with the last one to indent in the year 2000, the, the percentage has gone up, it's up to 78% now. So TPI, 1835. And uh, I would say maybe in the US right now, they could be in the tune of 2,800 there about. So you can see this bull has a piece out there. Then the net merit, this is 237 uh, pounds, I mean in dollars. What does this one tell us? This pool to the to a US farmer is very valuable because it will produce daughters which are so free and are worth uh, sorry, are worth that amount of uh, money. So it means it will produce daughters which are very useful to the farmers out there. Now uh, PTA, PTA middle, this is predicting transmitting ability for middle. PTAM, 1,158 kgs of milk with a reliability of 77%. My, that's a good goal. Yeah, that's a lot of milk. Then PTA fat, the F there, 8 kgs, right? But this is in kgs. But on the next week, the next column is minus 0.09%. It means uh, the fatty percentage is low, but because the animal is going to produce a lot of, I mean, a very huge volume, uh, the amount of fat which will be corrected will be positive, right? But the percent, the thickness of the milk is a bit low. Is a minus that, but you can see the value. Then PTAP, that is predicting transmitting ability for protein. It's also 8 kg with a minus 0 0.06. Then feed efficiency, 40%. The ability of 76. So this means this animal is, is still using the feed efficiently at the at, 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 40%. So it's not bad. Then daughter pregnancy rate percent. This one is a minus 0 0.7, right? And we said the deviation is up to minus three. So there's a negative there on uh, pregnancy uh, rate. Then productive life. This one is a point, a 1.8. It means this one is going to produce long living uh, cows. So in the US, if you say this five, five and a half years, then you can see this one is going to end. And basically, this is just on, on months. This is not on years. The 1.8 is extra months above the average, right? Somatic cell score, this one is a 2.9. And we said the range was 2.5 to 3.5. So you can see uh, this one is a very good value because we said chances of mastitis striking in is in reference to asthmatic cell score of 3.5 and above. Then AFA conception rate, HCR. That one is a minus 2.4. This is because you can see also the, the daughter pregnancy rate, there was a problem there. So this one, but all these could be, these figures could be due to the amount of milk produced because very high producing animals have got those issues 
of not uh, coming, uh, coming on it quickly, conceiving quickly, because most of the energy is taken to the production. So it is expected. Then cow calving rate, that is CCR, cow calving rate at 0 0.6. No, concept, cow conception rate, sorry, cow conception rate. So you can see it's at 0 0.6. It means mature cows uh, conceive better than uh, infants with this particular daughters of this bull. Then the fertility index. It's a 0 0.8, uh, I think it's a negative there. And it, it just, this is in reference to the, the daughter pregnancy rate. That is what is affecting that. Then below it, you find there is a, a calving trait. That is now DCE is daughter calving is, and SCE is sire calving is. So you find that uh, there are no issues of having here because we said anything above eight is where you are likely to have problems of having, right? Because this is now 4.5, 5.6, and the reliability is 55. So all these things have been made possible by the genomic evaluation because initially having is one based on observation. Farmers added to report the, how the cows uh, were calving. And to populate that information used to take time. But now, with the genomic evaluation, all these things can be able to be done. Now, going down, there is a net, the other graph below. And uh, from the first row, you will find USDA. This is the evaluation institution. I would say this is equivalent of KRBA of the US. Yeah, of Austin Association, the one which is doing the evaluation. CDCB is the organization which gives authority of release of any genomic evaluation data. Right? They have been authorized by USDA this, this kind of uh, evaluation data. And then the next row is the physical trait evaluations. What it means, the presentation of this information, because the way genomic information comes is in a different format, but we, we convert it to a format which will be able to be presented in this way, in a graphic form, because Farmers are likely to appreciate it faster when everything is uh, presented in a graphic form because you can be able to see the negatives and the positives. Therefore, on the left side is the physical trait evaluations. This is the trait which has been evaluated. And then on the right side is the scores, that is the STS. You can see STS somewhere. And the, the description of that trait. Therefore, on the right side, you find this genomic evaluation. It tells you this one was done in the date of evaluation. This was September, it's supposed to be 2018. It's, uh, I hate missing there. Then the second row is the scores of the composites. And in this case, therefore, PTAT, you remember we said we talked about that, predicted transmitting ability of traits, all the traits, linear traits combined. And this pool is scoring 0 0.29. And we say that the average is zero, right? So all the traits combined, they are very good. Therefore, if you look at this graph, as much as you find some are negative, some are positive, if they are combined together, you end up with a positive. So because there is no bull, because there could be one or two, or very, very few, I mean, which are everything is on the positive. But when you find just a bull, then chances are that you may not have other things like production. Yeah, there are those which are very good for, for information, but you can't have a bull which is 
good for everything. And therefore, that's why they have to come, they have to come up with this uh, composite to assist the farmers to make a quick decision on whether to use Hambur or not. Therefore, overall, PTAT for this group is positive 0 0.09. The Hunter composite, UDC, is a 0 0.30, right? Therefore, if you just go, I will assume we shall go down, we shall be able to explain the, the composite uh, items, you find the under is a positive. Then feet and leg composite. All the traits relating to the feet and leg, yes, are negative three, uh, 0 0.30. And we shall come down to, I'll show you, uh, as we go down the graph, why that's negative. Therefore, on the right, you find GTPI. This one stands for Genomic Total Performance Index, which is 1835. You saw it up there as TPI. And this one uh, gives the differences between bulls which are genomically tested and the ones which are progeny tested. Therefore, if the evaluation was based on uh, progeny test result alone, then the G would be not there, would not be there. Therefore, when you find a G, it means that is a genomic evaluated TPI. Then the reliability is 76%, right? That's what it means there. That's a reliability. You realize now why, what, why I took the trouble to take you all the was Reliability, 76%. And we said 95 and above, no change, right? So therefore, this reliability, this information is as a reliability of 76%. That means more information coming in, the reliability will go up. Yeah. And by use of this bull, it means there could be outliers, which might not necessarily perform as expected. So there is that possibility. But you can see we are going to want 95%. Uh, and therefore, this genomic evaluation will have to be supported by data performance. Yeah. Therefore, data performance will be very important. Now, going down the traits, Stacia, you can see there it is in the next column is written short. And on the right side, it means anything uh, in the mean row, there is a mean right there, there is supposed to be a zero at the bottom. Therefore, if you have anything on the negative, you are supposed to describe it. You would start this teacher, you describe it as short. But if it was on the right side, if it was above zero, you would classify that one as tall. That's how you would describe that individual. If this, the score for strength was negative, I mean below zero, negative, once a negative, you would describe that animal as frail. But above zero, it isn't described as strong. Body depth on the on the left, you describe it as shallow. And so all these descriptions on, on the left are for traits which are below zero. That is to answer negative, right? Anything on the right, you ask, ask the description there in the last column. Now, then the, the one with the, the STAs, these are now the actual scores which are depicted in this, which are presented in this graph. And these are the scores of this individual. Therefore, you find that stature is minus 0 0.54. And that's why you can see the graph going to the left. Uh, strength, you can see is a 0 0.1. And therefore, that's why it is positive on the right. It, uh, it has passed the zero, the, the mid right. And you can see it is strong by 0 0.1. It is in deep by 0 0.3. It has open lips by 0 0.17. It has a sloped lamp angle, you know. So all that describes now what is in that graph. Therefore, you find that when we are talking about the under, right at the bottom, you below the feet and legs score, you can, you can find the under curve, under depth, Front teeth placement, teeth length, rear teeth placement, that is all what combines, I mean, it consists of 
as a composite. Behind the composite. I'm sure with that kind of uh, description, therefore, you are able to be, you will be able not to understand the catalog. And uh, uh, therefore, we have uh, quite a number of books which have been uh, written through genomics in Kagrik, especially the physicians. And therefore, I present a long list of books. Yeah? Uh, you can see the TPIs from the bottom there, from 18, down, down, down. There is even Boma there with over 2,000. You can see the PTM rock, I was saying, this. And don't forget that this is US reference population. There's a lot of pregnancy rate column there, somatic cell score, the PTA traits, and DCE, daughter cardinalis, and the sire cardinalis. And the rest goes down. You can see the one you've just been looking at, and one right at the top there. And uh, you can see we have got bulls, Akina Michael there with a very high TPIs. Yeah. So depending on your breeding program or objective of your farm, if your interest is a uh, particular trait, this one helps you to, to select. And therefore, with that, uh, I wish to, to end my presentation. Yes, and therefore, Kagirik, as we have said, you can see our semen is competitive with uh, those of the US. Every on their home, home, home ground, to be able to, to rank them based there. Therefore, the way forward for this country, I think, is we should come up with uh, our own index so that we can uh, just do an evaluation and we give them their, our formula to key in the information. Because our, if you can imagine now, if our reference population near the, the average of the Frisian would let's say be 7,500. So you can see those bulls could be costing very high uh, PTAs for milk, right? And so I think that is the way we should go uh, so that we can be able to, people don't say in Morocco, no. Loco is, um, is not, it, it, we find that our bulls are competitive with the brand and they can be able to compete uh, one way. And you can see Kagrik bulls produce champions. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anampu. And uh, before we go to the question and answer session, because I'm seeing there are several questions coming on board, uh, kindly, for those who joined in a bit later, kindly remember to add your name and your KVB number on the chat box or the Q&A uh, box so that uh, you will be awarded the CPD points. Somebody was asking how many CPD points do you get from this session? Dr. Roslyn has already answered you two CPD points. Now, um, before we go to questions, because I want to give us all ample time to type our questions on the chat or the Q&A session, I would like to invite briefly uh, Dr. John Kibe. Lillian, you can make a doctor. Ah, sorry, Mr. John Kibe, host from Kenya uh, Livestock Breeders Association. Uh, he has something small he wants to tell us about uh, milk testing. So uh, we'll give him uh, a few minutes uh, to run through his uh, uh, short presentation on milk testing and what uh, KLBA is doing about uh, milk testing. Then we will be back uh, to Mr. Jab Damlik and all the panelists so that we can tackle the questions that are coming in. Uh, once again, uh, Mr. Jamlik, thank you very much for demystifying uh, the great uh, uh, genomic issues uh, that uh, most of our clients have been asking about. Our breeding questions are well catered for. And uh, you can see uh, my fellow participants that uh, we've gone a long way to make sure that uh, we have availed this information. We have helped you uh, understand 
uh, the kind of uh, seamen that uh, we are bringing on board. Like he said, not just local, but uh, something that comparable to the international standards, we rank on top. And uh, we are able even from the breeding session to handle uh, issues of uh, what uh, most our farmers are going through, getting gene dumping, you get a, gen a genome uh, genes that uh, were used all the time ago, maybe uh, the bullion being brought for was used uh, in 1940s and the performance has gone under. Yet you're ignoring uh, what you're calling as local uh, genetics that were evaluated just the other day, 2018, and they have proven proven to be high quality. So kindly, if you have any questions, any questions about genetics, any questions about breeding programs, any questions about uh, the bulls that we have here, uh, feel free to write them on, uh, on our chat. Remember, uh, this is live recorded. Maybe some of us may not have gotten a few um, uh, abbreviations here and there. Uh, kindly, they are right uh, on our Facebook. You can replay the whole thing. You can replay the lesson. And uh, it's been a long journey. Some of us may have missed out uh, the previous sessions, the previous topics. So you can also find them from our Facebook page uh, because we've gone through several topics that I will mention. We went through breeds and breed merits. And uh, as you can see now, when you understand the SAR catalog, you are able to look at the merits that we were taught, uh, whether that specific bull has such merits. Uh, we also went through considerations in dairy animal breeding, what to consider uh, in dairy breeding. We went through heat detection in a cow. We went through causes of AI, uh, why we have AI failures and how to troubleshoot on that and the management of the same. We went through the use of sex semen, uh, the merits and the demerits. Uh, we also did uh, production traits of economic importance in dairy farming. We did record keeping, animal identification, animal registration, and today we were doing sire catalog. Uh, we will be redoing uh, record keeping out of the demand that uh, was brought about by farmers uh, next week. And uh, we have a lot. We have pretty a lot. So you can only uh, tune in from our Facebook page and replay all those topics. So at this juncture, uh, Mr. Kibe, I have seen you've been made host. I don't know whether you are able to screen out uh, whatever you have so that uh, we go on. Tafadali. Uh, thank you, Kibe. We can now see your uh, screen. Kindly proceed. Well, thank you, Mary, for 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 the for the for the good intro, and also thank you, Anampi. You know, Anampi is an authority in this matter, so it's always a pleasure uh, hearing him have a presentation. Uh, I'm seeing like today we have, uh, we have a good number of people, and uh, uh, just just when we're almost ending is when now the, 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 the it's becoming more juicy. So welcome to everybody who is who is new. Uh, as Madam has been saying, I'm John Kibe from the, the National Livestock Recording Center, which is an institution in the State Department of Livestock with the main objective of uh, breeding improvement. All we do is, 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 is breeding, not just breeding, but, but making sure that we have uh, positive, <coughs> uh, positive outcomes through improvement. We're also involved in the design and implementation of breeding programs, uh, like the one now we have, the National Dairy Cattle Breeding Program. Then uh, fundamentally also what uh, Namfi mentioned, we, 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 are, we are the institution that, that does genetic evaluation. And we also crucially also do uh, milk component analysis, which is now what I'm going to talk about here. Then uh, also of, of importance is that we, we are involved in, um, in, a, in a, a genetic conservation of indigenous types. It's been realized that uh, the whole world might end up losing the, the, the indigenous uh, 
treats that we have. So there's, a, there's an international move through AUI but locally in Africa for us to be able to make sure that we don't lose those very crucial and important genetics that we have had uh, with us uh, in this country. And also we have, um, we are a key, 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 key player in the uh, genetic advisory committee that now identifies uh, the dams that are going to be used for, uh, for, 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 for giving us the, the bull calves that we need for, for semen production. Uh, I'll talk a bit on um, performance recording. And this is uh, to try to, to, to help us move eh, from, uh, we have talked so much about data cut registration and our farmers are at a level. If you have uh, KLBA data, uh, if you have KLBA data or the Kenya Star Book data on registration, compare that with, with the transition to, 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 to performance recording is a huge gap there. So we would want to emphasize the importance of us being able to provide this data on the performance. And this is with regards to uh, the quantity and the quality. Uh, the information, uh, the extension message that has, was so far being uh, sent out was that uh, registration, dairy cut registration adds value, is a value addition to the animals. And people stopped there. And we had some people who really benefited from that in that they would buy animals and register them and then sell them at, 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 at the top price, even, even to, to as, 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 as far as Rwanda and, 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 and Tanzania. Uh, virtually because we have information, there is value in the information that we have for each particular animal. So farmers, most farmers registered and stopped there. But now we find it's now important that they need to move. Essentially, as we've been saying in these forums, that uh, in the upgrading scheme, that you have animals moving up to the pedigree, any animal that is to be registered as an, inter, as a, as an appendix, <clears throat> the mother must be milk recorded. So, and I'm hoping that that part of the rules, uh, so that now we can have force most of our farmers to be able to, to really uh, capture this bit of, uh, of, uh, of performance recording. And as we are going to see, it's, it's a very easy process. Uh, it is not, it's not uh, a daily routine that would interfere with the number of farm operations. Last week, uh, uh, Duma mentioned a bit about performance recording. And as you can see there, it, is, uh, it involves the measurement of the various indicators of the animal performance. We want to measure and put a scale and then what we are going to use to, to compare the animals. And this information will basically be used in the decision making. And this decision making, I like when, when Anampi talked about local. Local doesn't mean it's bad. Through selection, selection means that you're looking at the whole population and getting the best out of that population. So even the, the, the ones that we have, when we talk of local semen, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, it's local is, is bad. It means that it is among the best. Then as he has shown with regards to genomics, we can see our bulls are really competitively uh, better uh, comparing with, uh, with, with the, those herds they have. So what are the elements of this? We'll have there, uh, we measure that performance. Then we also record that data. Once now we, we record the data is there, uh, the data now will be, be processed. And this processing now will end up with us having what we call now the, the EBVs, the estimated breeding values through the, the genetic evaluation. Then now we will now use that information to be able to, to help us make now management decisions. And at the, at the policy level there, at, at the higher level there, this, this decision now, this decision will now be on there. Now we can choose, we can be able to choose there. Uh, this, this dam eh, for the purposes of, eh, of it giving us eh, a, 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 a bull, I mean, sorry, a bull calf for us to be able to do semen harvesting out of it. 
then uh, the procedure is a repetition of what he did is that uh, for the for the for the for the quantity is that the farmer must now move to drsk you realize now the registration is that you move from the registration through the pink form is now there is is is, is for kenya start book then for the drsk now the farmer must also move register the animal now with drsk through now signing that form then uh, the individual cow and form for each lactating cow you realize the registration and breeding is individual we want to improve we want to have information on an individual animal that's why there it is eh? an individual cow entry for each lactating cow where the farmer now is going to give us uh, this information is information that was required during the, 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 the start book registration that would cool down the identification the ancestry records we want to know the, <coughs> the, the, the family the family of the animal then also the parity that is the, 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 the calf number and also the date of calving. That becomes fundamentally important uh, to do. Then now once that form is filled, it is submitted to DRSK. Then now of importance now at that stage is that uh, in point number two, uh, this, this form once is submitted, the farmer is expected to provide milk production for that animal from the fifth day after calving. We expect now that we, we, the colostrum would have cleared. So we'll have now the real milk. So fifth day after calving, then every month, 14th a.m. and 40, sorry, 14th p.m. and 15th a.m. That is every mid month, the farmer is able to provide and record. And I think this was last time the issue of, of, of ethics came up, whatever farmer lied. Uh, we are relying on, 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 on the honesty of the farmer to make sure that he provides the right information. 15, the amount of milk he milks, 15th, 14th in the evening, 15th in the morning. Then also in the form, there is a, there is a, I wish I had a form here, probably would look for it. There is a slot there for three times. So if a farmer milks also three times, there is a column there for a farmer to fill how much uh, between 14 and 15. Uh, during the noon milking, he was able to get. Then now, should now follow. Now we'll talk about milk analysis. Now is basically what 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 LRC does. So we'll talk much about that. Then now also, a good now um, outcome of the whole process is that the farmer can able to get lactation certificate and hard average reports. It's good to mention here that uh, all this process uh, is, is 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 computer programmed in that the farmer provides fifth day after calving, then every month, mid-month provides us. So you realize those are like uh, 9, 10, 11, 11 records. So out of that, a computer program is able to estimate and be able to give us the amount of milk that that animal gave, gave us with a lot of certainty for that lactation. So the, 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 the DRSK through KLBA is able to provide now individual lactation certificates and hard average reports that as, as, as we were told last week, there is a cost attached to it. For you to be able to get this lactation certificate and the hard average reports, there is a cost that the farmer has to meet. So coming to, I'm rushing because uh, we, I can see we, we're very short of time. And this was an annex to the, to, the, to the presentation of today. This milk analysis is done by the, what we call the Regional Livestock Recording Center. Good to point out here that the LRC is headquartered in Naivasha, the neighbor to DTI there. But we have now these regional livestock recording centers that are covering specific regions. And also very soon probably uh, we will have uh, what we call satellite offices to make sure that we, we, we also kind of try to, to reach more farmers as we can. So the regional centers are in Kapete, that covers the Nairobi region and the Ukambani region. And we have the one in Karatina that now covers uh, Mount Kenya region, the Nyeri, Kirinyaga, and Meru. Then you also realize there is that uh, this one in Karatina is supposed to cover also part of Isiolo there. So probably as we carry on, we'll be able to have, uh, to have one there. Then also realize when you're talking of milk, 
in Isiolo now, in those uh, Asal areas, camel milk now also becomes important. And maybe probably in the near future, we would also want to kind of be able to, uh, to really be able to, to analyze uh, the, the, the camel milk and probably have a proper breeding uh, strategies for them. Then you have the Nakuru one that now covers the uh, Central Rift, part of Nyandarwa, like Kipia, Baringo. Uh, then you have uh, this part of the, the lower Narok, it also covers there, and also a bit of uh, the lower Kericho. Then you have the one in Eldoret, now covers now part of the North Rift, Eldoret, Uasinjishu, Kitale, uh, Kericho, and uh, the Bomets up there. Then you have one in Maseno that covers the, 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 the Nyanza part, the Kisi and the Luo Nyanza. Then you have one in Voi that covers uh, the, the, the coastal region. <clears throat> for us, for purposes of genetic evaluation, we have what we call validated results. And these are results that are done after every two months. That is to mean if I analyze an animal today, the next time I'll be able to to analyze or have a result that can be allowed uh, for purposes of genetic evaluation is 60 days from now. So that would mean probably it would be uh, 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 probably mid mid of uh, of July. Mid July is the earliest you can have. Or in the breeding rules, in the breed society rules, they say it is an at least in once in a hundred days. That is, you have now. Well, for us now, what has, has really helped us now is that we have at least one in every quarter. Then uh, the components we are looking at are the butter fat, the protein, the solid non-fat. We have now machines that are allowing us now to be able to do lactose. Then also there water, water here meaning, uh, for those of us who read more about milk, milk has water. It has an average of 87% water, and now the 13% are solid. So what we are looking for here would be anything above what is in the milk. And we say it should not be above 10%. So if you have a sample that, that gives you now a, a water percentage of over 10%, then that, that probably would indicate it's not you're not dealing with the real milk there. Then also very soon, we have a capacity for somatic cells. We have had the... Two, two, two different uh, brands of equipment to be able to help us now do somatics and analysis. Uh, plants are still underway for us to operationalize this process, but now because we have the, the equipment, very soon we'll, 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 we'll uh, roll it out. And uh, the, the equipments we're using are uh, ultrasonic milk analyzers, and these ones require now for us to be able to do fresh milk per care. Uh, you, you, in the past, we used to do what we call chemical separation of the milk components uh, to be able to, to be able to read butter fat and protein. The problem now with this, with, with, with the, the Garba method, as we call it, was that it doesn't give you, uh, it doesn't give you as a percentage, it doesn't give you uh, points. It doesn't give you several points. It reaches up, but you see with machines, you can have 3.25 percentages. Then also with, with the machines, you can have be able to do it is one machine that is helping us to be able to do all these components that, that you can see there. Uh, that's, that's a pictorial on the, on, the, on the equipments that we use. Probably someone would ask why we have a, a, a preference for EcoMilk. The, pro, the, the reason is that uh, one is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the the dealer capacity. We have a local dealer around. Then also two, Ecomil provides for a manual sanction. And then in case now the, 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 the automatic sanction fails, you can uh, shift to manual sanction for you. Then on the right is now a presentation on the, is a presentation on the, on how now the records, uh, the records uh, uh, come out and are able to be seen. You can see now this equipment with this machine we're using, uh, is able to also give you other parameters. It is able to give you pH. Uh, it is also able to give you issues of freezing point. It's also, also to, to give you there the temperature. Uh, and then also, it also gives you now uh, issues of conductivity. And I found it nice to be able to, to, 
really uh, talk about this because uh, this has a direct implication on, on, on the kind of results we are able to get at the, at, at the analysis. And they are broken into two. We have uh, genetic and environmental. Genetic, you see now breeds, each breeds, the four, the, the, the four, the four breeds, uh, the four milk breeds that we have, each has a, has, a, has, a, has, a, has its own level, average levels. And we find the Frisians have very low milk solids, while us the Basins have very high milk solids. And this is out of what we say, the correlation between quantity and quality. The higher the volumes, the lower the, 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 the solids. Then also there are going to be individual differences. And this is out of now when we go back, if we want to go back to issues of cell division, the, the meiosis stuff, we would realize now that there is going to be differences between animals, in, even animals that are siblings. And also there, there is the very key aspect of feeding. Uh, the properly fed animals would be able now to have higher, 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 higher solids. And also importance here to mention is that uh, for the purposes of, 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 of butterfly, <coughs> it has been found that a high fiber diet <coughs> leads to a higher, uh, a higher, a higher output of butterfly. So animals that are fed on a higher fiber diet would lead to a higher output of butterfly. Then also the lactation of the age. And this also is a stage of lactation. If you draw a lactation curve, you would see at each, at each, each and every stage is going to be different. Then also the age. Uh, if you compare a, a heifer, a fast cover, and an, and an animal in the five or six, six uh, uh, calving there, there is going to be such differences. Then also there is the, the milking interval. That is to mean the, 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 the morning milk, the noon or the evening milk is going to be different. That's why as you're going to talk there about the, sorry, as we talk there about uh, the sampling, you see that we need to, <coughs> <coughs> sorry there, we need to, 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 to resample <coughs> in all the, the samples. Then also, <coughs> completeness of milking, you realize that during milking, the start, the middle, and the end, depending on the nutrients available at that particular time, you're going to have uh, variations in, uh, in the milk comment. That's why for us, in our case, we recommend that it must be complete milking. When the farmer to give us a sample, must completely milk so that now we are able to have a, a good compass. Then also, as we know, the health status, we know the effect mastitis has on the other and, and, and the quality of the milk. So <coughs> those are some, those are the factors that really affect uh, the milk composition. The components that would have, would have uh, <coughs> to be affected by such. This is critical because uh, we need to have a, a, a representative sample that is to mean you don't, if, if the farmer milks 10 liter in the morning, eight liters in the evening, we don't have to, we will need to make sure that uh, we, we bring a sample that is almost similar, not almost, by the way, should be similar with, with now the milking she did. So we need to do that. Then also, as I said, we need to have a sample there. We need to have, representative uh, sample, each of the milking. In the evening, a sample. In the morning, a sample. Then also now, we combine that to give us now a 24 hours kind of, uh, of, of milking so that for us to be able to, because as you realize, uh, there is going to be differences in the amount of nutrients available for milk synthesis at each particular time, depending on the, on the when, when the animal fed, it completed the whole digestion to be able to avail the, the, the nutrients for, for milk analysis. And this one now we say, how do you do it now is after the farmer completely milks the animal, is supposed to mix uniformly, so as to be able to spread all the components. And this is the caveat there, we know how fats and oils behave in water, they flow. So if a farmer doesn't coagulate the milk in a good way, you will either end up <coughs> Uh, uh, sourcing a sample that has very high fat or has very little fat depending on the, 
on the on the on the on the spread of the compost. Then also now that milk now in each of the of the sampling must be poured into a, a labeled sample bottle, which we, we provide. Then the milk must be refrigerated or cooled. You realize we recommend a, a, an evening morning kind of sampling, because in the evening the temperature are a bit cold <coughs> than in the morning. Then now we say now in the evening, as the last point says there, in the morning now once the farmer samples, he brings it to the lab as, as early as possible. Because we realize milk is a perishable product that will go bad if, if care is not taken. So we provide cool boxes and ice packs for, for those farmers who don't have a, a refrig a refrigeration facilities at their place. Then you can see now there is we provide also, <coughs> we provide uh, for to ease the sampling burden to make sure that uh, the farmer doesn't feel like it's an inconvenience. We provide uh, in our case here in Akuru, we provide uh, the, 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 the milk in buckets, and we also provide the, the plungers and also the sample bottles. <coughs> the plunger, if a farmer doesn't have a plunger, he can uh, have two buckets and kind of try to, to pour into one, four, 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 five, up to four, four, five, four, five times. Uh, and also now when he's collecting the sample, uh, he avoids the foam. We don't need the foam, so we need the, the real milk. Then as you can see there on the right, the sample bottle has a label, it is labeled. And this, 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 this marking as we are going to see in the form gives us now, it links now the sample to the animal. And then as we are going to see there in the form, there are several modes of, of, of us being able to pour. For example, you can see now the, 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 the right one there is 14. Others now put the, 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 the cow names there. <laughs> so that is a, we have one there of, of, of a form there. We have the, a, a picture of a form there. And you can see now, <clears throat> the form now is, is, is requires now the information. We need to indicate the information there. Uh, we have the information on the, on the, 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 the RSK hard number, which is unique. And you have the hard name, the owner's name, contacts, then now the regional center, which is doing it, which is here in Nakuru. Uh, then also, which date was the analysis done? I'd say this is fundamentally important in that it's going to indicate to us when next, when earlier can we be able to repeat the, the test. Then you can now see the, the cow name there. Uh, then also the cow number. There are some people who give numbers and names. You can see in this case, this one gives the cow name. Uh, when you look at this form and relate to the to the um, what we say there about uh, factors affecting uh, composition, you can see now this form kind of tries to give us uh, the whole of that. In that you have now the cow name, the individual differences, as we say. Then the breed, the breed now becomes fundamental. Then you also have now the differences between milkings, how much was milked at what particular time. Then you have now the, the total there. Then also the lactation number. Remember we say there, the lactation number has, a, has, a, has an implication with regards to, <coughs> to, to the need. And now the results are as given inside there. Uh, you can see now the, the, the fat, fat, the protein, solid non-fat, the lactose, the density, and also the water. <coughs> then this form now is shared now amongst now LRC, for purposes of, of feeding that, there is what now we do now in original centers is we, we do now a, a milk analysis database where this information you can see there, the raw information is put into, a, into, a, into an Excel worksheet for purposes of being able to <coughs> I'm, I'm lacking a better word there, for you to be able to, 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 to be utilized for the purposes of genetic evaluation then now it's also fed back again to DRSK. Remember we said they give lactation certificates. These lactation for certificates indicate averages, the annual averages, uh, the annual averages of, of, of this animal, uh, DRSK will be able to give that, and also the farmer. Remember I said, part of the importance now of this process was that it will now make the farmer make a decision. Remember we said a low fiber diet, a high fiber diet leads to a high, Butterfly. So a farmer can be able to immediately, once he receives these results, be able to 
make changes to the diet. Number two, these after the average now, the DRSK, the, the lactation certificate would indicate this is the that this is the the the, 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 the potential the annual potential of that cow in terms of butter fat and protein. So when, when they are doing now, going back to what Anampi was, was talking us through, getting now to the catalog, you now be able to look now for, <clears throat> for a bull that will have positive implication towards improving, improving the, 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 the herd. Then uh, that's part of it. This is a, this is a paradox to farmers that, uh, we are, we want the end result is the bull but we are going we are beginning with the, with we are looking at the cow so we are we are looking at uh, we are studying the the, the, the the dam but our major interest is the sire and as as, as Nampi has explained there what ends up at the catalog is a process it is a process that starts with dairy cattle registration performance recording genetic evaluation uh, then you have now the genetic advisory committee that is now that does the contract meeting. Then you now have a, a semen production. And before now it gets now to semen production there is what now Anampi there was talking about. Either you do progeny testing or now you do genomics for us now to resist, to be able to resist uh, that, that go to, uh, to the market. Uh, this, I've, I've mentioned about this, why we do, because this was said last time, uh, is just to pass through, <coughs> and then what is the main, the main objective here is, uh, is we want to genetic improvement. We want to improve the animals that we have, but also again, an you there talked something about that. The more genetic, the more information we have, the 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 the, the, the more the reliability we will have, <coughs> and the more the the certainty, and the more the sharpness we can be able to, to generate uh, from 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 such information. Then also now at the farm, the farmer also also benefits at the farm. He has information now for him to do to make decisions at the farm. And also, as we said, the issue about value addition, animals that are registered could be <coughs> would have 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 they, they can be sold better. But remember here we said last time that uh, it is the expectation of <coughs> of us in the whole process that uh, if by the time a farmer gets to a pedigree animal. The production of that animal at the pedigree stage is far much better than what was at the, the, the foundation or the, 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 the intermediate level, at the foundation or the, the intermediate level there. Then there is also that aspect of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, contract meeting, uh, being able to, to do, to participate in, in, in shows and, 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 and the exhibitions. Then also there, for us now as a country, and I like the way Anampi says that it's a high time we needed to develop our own genomic standards. So the more data we have, the better we are going to be able to. Then also remember our role now, all of us now as technical people, is to once we increase the productivity, we are able to to, to have a huge impact with regards to uh, food security as a country. So that's that's a picture on uh, how a breeding cycle looks like. And, and and this now involves all the, <coughs> the, the the stakeholders as you can see there. Then the last one also now this one now is is more now detailed now is more technical, and as you can see now it has now all the all the the the, 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 the players being involved uh, being involved there. And the end result is that we have better semen out of a process. Uh, that, 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 that is scientifically done, scientifically proven, and also as, as we said there, uh, that has, it gives us now the, 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 the international appeal uh, that, that we can have with regards to, uh, to, to the animals that, that we are able to produce. Thank you so much for, 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 for allowing me to share that. It's been an interesting walk. We're hoping for more and more of, of such. Back to you, Mary. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kibe. It's always been a pleasure to have you around. I, I can see what we've learned today is quite huge. I love the interesting uh, debate on the Q&A question. And uh, without further ado, without taking much of your time, uh, I wanted just to tackle a few issues uh, on the 
question and answer. I can see we have several questions for Mr. Nambu. And uh, for the sake of those maybe who, are, who may not access the chat, uh, there are some of them that have been answered. Once again, if you're in this webinar and you require your CPD points, remember to type in your name, your full names and your KVB number so that uh, you may be allocated the points. Now, um, I will take us through briefly and quickly uh, through the Q&A sessions as uh, panelists uh, are on board, uh, we'll be ready uh, to answer them. Uh, something very interesting from Vincent Ogola, uh, she, he was asking, is fertility index, so in fertility index, the higher the figure, the better? Of course, yes, that is what we, were, we learned today. Mr. Nampi answered and said yes. Yeah, the higher the index, the better. But we learned on somatic cells, the lower the index, the better. Uh, there's also another question. This is very useful information, particularly on the genomic evaluated bulls. Have any of your ashes and jersey bulls undergone similar evaluations? I will just answer what uh, Mr. Nampu typed there. He said, currently, we're negotiating for a partner on jersey and ashes, also working on developing genomic evaluated bulls. Maybe you can elaborate better. Uh, because you understand, like for the freshers, we had to include the host and freshman association. So maybe uh, we are negotiating with the Jesse and Asha uh, associations. Mm -hmm. Wakesa, Joshua, thank you for your question. You're asking why should CAG, why shouldn't CAGRIC develop their own or Kenyan-based reference index using why we using the US as opposed to uh, having our own. Um, Kenya should have its own index so that it can give us a better picture of our bulls and genetic merits. Uh, Mutahi Noah is asking, is there any correlation between high somatic cell scores and high production since bulls who are high yielders have high somatic cell counts? Uh, Mr. Nampi will answer that. Um, John Wakesa says, I have noted, um, but institutions bestowed with the responsibility of uh, of genomics and genes and gene banking like CAGRIC, uh, he believes uh, CAGRIC in conjunction with Breeders Association of Kenya should come up with uh, uh, our own index. Uh, but uh, Wekesa, <laughs> Anambio says that uh, we cannot do that because we cannot rank ourselves. We cannot uh, do our own exam, set our exam and mark for ourselves. So those are some of the charts that, uh, that some of the issues that have been going through the chat session. And therefore now I will want to hand over to Mr. Nampu to answer those few questions that maybe were not answered. We also have in somebody, uh, Techno Kamon, we didn't know your name, but thank you anyway. Uh, you say, do bulls affect production of dam? That is, do they cause any variation in lactation? Uh, Mr. Nampi will also answer that one. I had other questions on the chat. Um, David Sang was asking, how does uh, the different climatic conditions affect performance and genetic evaluation? And then, uh, yeah, I think that those are some of the questions. Uh, is there any correlation between somatic cell scores and high production scores? So there is also a question from Jason Misheka. So uh, Mr. Nampu, I can hand over to you. Maybe you can tackle a few of the questions. Uh, Dr. Rosalind Karibusana, uh, you'll also be on the standout to assist in answering those questions uh, as well as any other uh, panelists. Karibusana, Mr. Nampu. Okay, um, thank you Mary for that. Um, answering some of my questions. And I'm going to go very quickly on uh, the question list. And if, if I can share the screen a bit, I would appreciate. Uh, 
Meanwhile, I can be answering a question from uh, support was, I think that was uh, Sun was about grammatic differences, if I got it right. Yeah, so let me go very quickly to the questions. Grammatic differences in evaluation, you realize that we said from the beginning, production of an individual, that's a bull, or I mean a, I mean a particular cow, it is determined by the underbridge of the population, genetic merit, plus environmental effect. All those contribute. And when we talk about the environment, basically we are talking about not just only the weather. We are talking about the housing of that animal. What does it eat? The type of fins provided. The weather itself, the temperatures, if it is very hot or cold, you know that will affect the performance of the animal. The way the animal is milked, times of milking, is it one, tw twice a day or three times a day? All those is what in genetics is called environment. Therefore, you can imagine, I mean, uh, you, you cannot be able to see possibly the effect on a performance of an animal. Because if you did, if an animal is given um, quality fins, another one is given a very, very dry of grown nepian grass. Another one is on a very quality rusan high protein as a feeds. Is the production going to be the same? No. So this is the environment and well, all those factors. And that's why we are saying a particular animal could be a very high producer, but because the environment is not light, you find that that animal will be disadvantaged. That's why in genetics, you in the evaluation, you'll be told that an animal can be producing very little milk, but Genetically, that animal is superior because possibly that he was not that cow was not given the right environment. Yeah, therefore, uh, modification of environment helps in the, um, determining the performance of an individual. Therefore, I think from that explanation, you can be able to see the effect of an environment, and that is why if you want to get the genetic merit of an animal we have to take care of the environmental effects which are affecting animals differently. Otherwise, some animal can be a very good as high genetic potential, but very, but because it has been subjected in very poor environment, very poor fins, very cold, very hot temperatures, for example, that animal will not perform, do not produce a lot of milk. So that's why it is very important you can see now the, the effect on the environment in a performance of an animal. So I think that one is uh, clear. There was a question on um, Asha and Jesse, why, whether we have genomics evaluation or not. Yes, at the moment we, we don't have because uh, there isn't much information which has been uh, collected on Jasa, Asha's and Jesse's because of the population and also enhances because of the population worldwide. But some countries are still on green, but with very low reliability. They are doing genomics, all right, with the low evaluation, but they are not willing to share that with other countries because uh, of the low reliability. So that's why they are not be able, they are not able to share. However, I answered um, briefly that Kagri, we are working on a homegrown genomic evaluation. We are working very closely with the IRD because they have a platform on data collection. We are trying to collect information. And uh, when we get uh, the database of uh, the reference population, we are possibly going to do a run 
for these animals. And by that time, possibly an index will have been uh, developed for this country. Yeah. Why the index is because index is very important because uh, we shall be able to rank animals based on our environment. Because in our, from that explanation of, of the environment, you have seen the effect. That is why if you find, you may find a certain bull is important from outside with very good proofs, but when it's brought here, you find that it might not, it cannot even be the public bulls because the environment here is different. He was only performing very well because the environment was well moderated. Yeah. So we want to have a bull which is able to survive in all our hardship areas, yeah, all the difficult environment uh, of uh, scarcity of um, fiends, poor fiends, and so forth. We want an animal which can be able to perform under those in diverse environment. Therefore, if we can develop our own, own index, then we shall be able to portray a good picture of the performance of um, animals in our own environment. Because out there, where the animal is evaluated, is different. So if we have our own grown and um, genomic evolution, that will be there. Uh, the other question was on um, do bulls affect production of dams? That is, do they cause any variation in adaptation? Um, this, this question is not very clear, but uh, in my understanding, you see, when you have a cow, which is a dam, and then you use a semen of a particular sire, each one of them contributes 50% of genetics to the progeny. So it is only the progeny which benefits the effect of the sire and the dam. But this sire, just having a semen having been served to this cow, it will not affect the cow's uh, production. And that's why sometimes even inseminators confuse some of our, uh, I mean, our farmers. You are told, this is the this is semen I brought in, you use this one. And sometimes the farmer believes or tend to believe that is that uh, having used that semen, it will, it will increase the production of the cow. So it is not so. It is the progeny which is going to benefit from them, the genetic merit of this bull and the mother. It is a progeny, but not the cow it herself, right? I think that, that one uh, I've explained. And then uh, the other one was on, um, the other question was on, um, I think there was a question on Stisha. Yeah. There was somebody who asked about the Stisha that they should have uh, explained better in terms of what it means by short or high. Yeah. And this one, the Stisha in this graph, it talks about what is tall or what is intermediate or what is short, depends on the breed and it is the size of the animal. Now for Austin, it is, the measurement is done from the bottom to the top of the withers. And the intermediate, which is average, which is zero, is normally 55 inches, All right? And therefore, a tall animal would measure 57. And the very tall, which will be a positive three, will be 59. A short one would be very would be 53. And a very short one, 50. For Ngansi, what is an intermediate as a zero would be 54. Then, a positive one or, or positive one would be about 56 and a positive two would be 58. And the short would be 52 and the very short 50. And that is what would be uh, in, uh, in, a, in the standard deviation would be referred as minus two. So a minus two for Angansi would be 50 inches. For Anasha, 
the intermediate zero would be 53 inches tall. And very short, which is minus two, would be 49. And the tall, 51, I mean, a plus one would be 55. And a plus two would be 57. Just say intermediate is 49 inches. And uh, very short, which is a minus two, would be 45. And very tall, which is a plus two, would be 53. So I think that one clarifies uh, that. So it is bleed based. And therefore, for this particular one, which you have uh, put in this graph, this is for Austin Frisian. And uh, it is approved by the USDA. That is uh, normally the, the that's a ministry in the US, that is the United States Department of Agriculture. And then it is approved by the council uh, of um, the US responsible for the evaluation. That is council of dairy cattle breeding stroke Austin Association. So as I said, this council is the one which has got the mandate to do the evaluation and approve the result for publication. And this is equivalent, as I said, it is equivalent to our K your BA, uh, the evaluation, but you see, for result evaluation is normally the uh, error as you have talked about the center. So I would say this result. So I want to clarify there is this result of evaluation, the seen in the council there, uh, the council, data cutroom breeders, the US is equivalent to our livestock recording center. Now, the evaluation I sent, somebody was asking why can't calculate come up with the index? I said no. Even evaluation in the country, it is not calculate mandate. Calculate mandate is to provide, provide the genetics and then we need an independent uh, evaluator who is uh, the right to correct on the center to do an evaluation and to give an independent opinion on the bulls. Therefore, it is not calculated to come up with the index, right? And so we need an independent body to be able to do a fair uh, evaluation and to present the information for the, to the farmers do thrice. So I hope that one answers most of the questions I, I can be able to recall. Yeah, and unless there is any other, others I might have answered. Um, and therefore I wish to, to leave it at that. Thank you. Mary, back to Mary. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Nambi. That was detailed elaboration. I hope we now understand. Uh, just a few more questions coming in. Uh, okay. we, we have in a question uh, from PPOA5S. You know, that one just gives you our, your phone number here or your phone type. Explain yeah. causes of some heifers taking too long to come on heat, sometimes yeah. up to 24 months. Mm -hmm. Can they be induced? Uh, that is one question. The second one is, um, does it mean the more the somatic cells, the lesser the effect of mastitis? I think uh, that question of somatic cells has been asked uh, severally. There was somebody mm -hmm. else who had also asked, is there any correlation between somatic cells cause and mm -hmm. high production? Since mm -hmm. bulls who, have high, who are high yielders have high uh, SCS, Mm -hmm. And uh, a question from Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Cheru Tich. Uh, you're asking, does it mean that the more, or it's the same, the more the somatic cells, uh, the lesser the effect of mastitis. Michael, uh, semen from, huh? or oh, somebody had asked about semen from Michael. Yeah, it is available at Kagrik. I've seen Daktari has answered that. Um, yeah. There was a question from somebody, Jackson, Misheka, I'm trying to locate the question. He was saying, 
explain causes of some heifers taking too long or to come on heat. Yeah, I think yeah. I've asked that one. And uh, from Facebook, I'm also told there's somebody who's asking, what about the animal science that is animal production persons in terms of CPD? Unless uh, the Animal Production Society of Kenya demands that they need the animal production society, uh, the animal productionists to have any points, then that one we would consider. But as per now, the body that deals with the animal production does not require any CPD. Thank you. I think we can give Stephen Juma a chance to answer the question from Techno Come One. 16S. So can I finish first then? Uh, yes, sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So take my screen back. Your screen is on the oh, it's on it. oh, good, yeah, good, yeah. Good, 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 yeah. good. Now, very quickly. Um uh, okay, yeah, go on. Yeah, very quickly is uh, this this issue of somatic seroscope. As I did the presentation, I said the, the, the number provides an indicator of chances of a particular individual getting mastitis. Because what happens is these somatic cell counts, these are basically the white brand cells. And the white brand cells appear in large numbers because there is a threat in the heart that under component, compartment rather. Therefore, they are responding to a an innovation. So if there is a, 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 a causal agent for mastitis in there, it means these cells will come in large numbers to defend. Therefore, when an animal is found to have very high somatic cell counts or white brand cells, it means there is innovation there. And so when you find a situation of where you have got subclinical mastitis, where the milk is not yet getting spot, uh, but the, 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 the pathogens are still there, you find the scores are very high, and this one has been used. By the time the milk is getting burnt, then the pathogens are multiplied, there are many, there are a lot of white brand cells which are fighting them, and that's where the milk gets, gets spot. But at the early, early stages, you may not get it. Therefore, when you have these responses, it tells you uh, the animal. This one, as from studies, the presence of these somatic cell, uh, white brand cells, have been associated with chances of getting mastitis. So that is why we say, if there are very few, then it is better. When there are very many, chances are that you are going to get mastitis. Therefore, uh, I think that now explains what it means. And uh, if you find um, some animals uh, getting mastitis quite often because they are producing a lot of milk, as I said, it is not necessarily that this one is uh, related to a very high producing animals should have very high somatic serocompty. No, because if there is no uh, pathogens in the hander, then there's no need of very high somatic cell count. But what contributes to mastitis, there are very many other factors. Uh, the way you milk, yeah, uh, whether you disinfect your feet after milking or not, the, 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 the practice of milking, it is very critical because from milking, it is said that you have to allow the animals, the sphincters of the of the teeth canal to cross. You don't release the animals very quickly to go and lie down. They don't lie in Monday areas because you, you, have, you have to make sure that the, the environment is clean so that the pathogens do not get an opportunity to go up the canal and they do the uh, multiply in there to cause my tetanuses and all that. So I'm brief. It is the practice, the way the routine of milking, the cleanness of the environment. And then of course, because there is an genetic angle to this is what contributes to having green uh, milk production. Now, the other question was, not us too wrong to come on it. Yeah, the question was uh, why some of them take wrong. 
is because of uh, some of them take wrong because of of poor body condition. Yeah. yeah, you find that some of them are very poor, poor body condition and they won't come. Fertility or much fertility of uh, an animal for an animal to come on it, it must be of the right age. And you know I mean the right weight. In a cattle, uh, sexual maturity is not based on age. It is based on uh, weight. So if the animal will not have achieved the right weight, it will not come on it. That is why you find animals like zebu, they take almost uh, two and a half years because they are still yeah, um, bred and a very poor uh, environment. They take ages to reach sexual maturity because they are not uh, able to achieve the, 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 the right weight at the right time. So this is something which was moderated by Nisha to make sure that there is no, there is proper Honda out there. They are not being bred too early. Yeah, when they cannot be able to manage uh, their, their affairs of pregnancy. Therefore, it is based on weight. So if you have an AFA, which is in a very poor body condition, does not achieve the right weight, then it will not come on it, right? So you need to have those AFAs well managed, the want so that there's no competition in the in the abundance between parasites and the, uh, the, the nutrients you are giving. They must be of the correct abundance condition. The BSC must be right. Then there is uh, you need the, they need the proper adequate minerals. Yeah, everything right for them to be able to come on it at the right time. And so. Uh, but what we presented here is chances of conceiving. You know, there are two things here, coming on it and then conceiving. Because as much as you are going to come on it, you inseminate, the energy levels should be right for them to be able to conceive and carry the, and detain the, 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 the conception. So I think that one now answers uh, that question. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. So Mary, back to you. Uh, thank you very much. I think we have just one last question. Uh, sorry mm -hmm. for keeping you long participants, but I think this is very interesting and very informative. Uh, thanks also for the comments that are coming in. Uh, we may not be able to read all the comments, but I'll brush through a few. Uh, do bulls affect production of a dam? That is, do they cause any variation in lactation? Uh, Mr. Kibe, you can assist us there, please. And again, uh, before Kibe comes in, uh, still on the question of heifers taking too long to come on heats, uh, up to 24 months, can they be induced? Heat, oh. uh, we did, we did a, a, a session on heat detection and we learned something about heat synchronization. If you have a sizable herd that you want uh, the AI done together, it's a matter of uh, altering uh, the hormones and uh, through synchronization, you can induce heat. Thank you. Uh, Anambi, you seemed to have something to say on that before we move on to Kibe, please. Yeah, okay. I can, uh, th th this, this uh, issue of, uh, of the problem of the affecting production, I think that's one of the experience on the dam. Now, this issue of the AFA, it, it is important to, to note that um, having the right weight is what is important. For example, with the fission, I see the best practice is normally around 120 kgs. That is the best, the appropriate time to, to serve the AFAS. And some of them achieve that age very, I mean, that weight very, very early. They have seen farmers in so many things, they are, they are at even 11 months, 12 months, they can be able to get that. So long as they have achieved that weight, you will see them getting uh, showing each signs. And uh, it is critical that you get the right age, I mean the right weight, so that you can be able to derive maximum benefit from their performance. Because if they, you synchronize, it might not even work, by the way. So it is good that uh, the right age, I mean, the right weight is achieved. 
for that animal to be able to grow. Because when you, you know, normally when you introduce uh, pregnancies, it means most of the energy now will be, and the nutrients will be going to, cut, to take care of the pregnancy and the animal will not grow any longer. Therefore, the right weight is very important because at that point, the animal is able to balance between the, uh, the taking care of the pregnancy and its own um, maintenance uh, needs for that animal to be of benefit in terms of production of the farm. So it is important that we check the, the, the body conditions, the feeding, because body condition is an indicator of how well the animal has uh, come up. The other thing to note with the AFAS is of important is that um, AFAS, you have to bring them up very well from the one from when the calf is born. The way you bring it up is what determines its potential in terms of performance in the future. You find that very many animals have got good genetic potential, but the integration of that, that potential and the environment is what brings out its overall performance. If you are not able to unlock its genetic potential in the first 12 months, forget because it is very critical. Within the first 12 months, the animal has grown at the right speed, has attained the right weight, so that the genetic potential can be unlocked for them to be expressed. Otherwise, that is why you go to various farms, you find that they have been having a using quality bulls for very long, and very many years, but you don't find any outstanding animal in performance because after that time, the genetic potential gets locked up, and they even in the subsequent future uh, feeding will not be able to unlock that. So it is critical within the first four months that the heifer be fed well, with the, so that they can grow with the right speed to avoid any chances of stunting, so that you can be able uh, to have that heifer coming on it at the right time, and for you to be able to drive. Uh, for it to be able to exploit its maximum potential, genetic potential. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Back to you, Mary. I think you've even answered the question we wanted uh, Mr. Kibe to answer, but uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. Mary Matenge is saying, semen from Michael is available at Kagri. Kindly place your order. Oh, that was an answer to what uh, she was asking. She was asking about the semen from Kagri. Uh-huh. Um, as we wind out, I want to appreciate everyone for participating. And uh, as you can see, even from the breeding experts, uh, we are assuring you as Kagrik that the process of selection of sires and dams and our bulls give us the best offsprings and best even for our environment in Africa and here in Kenya. Maku, what Kagrik is doing is not only for Kenya, but for the entire of Africa. It is one of a kind in the Eastern Central Africa. So let it not benefit other countries more than it even benefits our own home country. So it is high time that even as Kenyans, we also embrace uh, what Kagrik, what Ke Kenya Livestock Breeders Association are doing. We also assure you of very strong, healthy calves, which grow fast, and mature fast. Just like uh, Mr. Nampi has told you, if you maintain on nutrition, our calves will give you fast growth and fast maturity. We'll also get high quality milk product production. You can imagine the production you have on Sire Catalog is not compared to the milk production from your neighbor, but comparable with the high performing countries like US, as well as uh, other good uh, countries, mainly ours, we have evaluated them against the US. Again, uh, we have high conception rates uh, from the Kagrik semen. Our semen goes through rigorous uh, processing uh, and we, are, we have that reliability. You will discover that most of our animals reliability goes uh, between 76, 77, all the way up. And therefore uh, the reliability of 
you getting the conception rates is pretty high. Our bulls are free from the infertility genes. He talked about the infertility of, uh, of, 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 of uh, bulls. And we have looked uh, at those uh, genes carefully. And uh, in our processing, we make sure that whatever we are giving, the bulls that we are coming up with are free from that factor. And we are giving you subsidized rate. The fact that uh, you might find imported semen uh, quite high, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, the truth of the matter is if you are to go out there and get their catalog and say this is the bull i want you will find that that semen goes as high as 20 000 kenya 20 000 kenyan shillings even 100 000 kenyan shillings so why are they giving you at 8 000? you should ask yourself and if we when importing we import at 20 000 and those serious breeders how comes you the farmer you're importing at 8 000 as some, some question marks there. But again, our competitives are low because we are a government agency and therefore the prices are subsidized. It's not like they are low, like production is very cheap. No, it's expensive, but the government has subsidized and that's why you find uh, we are offering very competitive prices. We are also guaranteeing the quality of semen from our technical experts in processing and handling. Very soon we will be doing a course on semen handling because this is where uh, most of uh, a few technicians out there are messing it all out. So we will also be checking out on semen handling. And with an experience since 1946, we can only guarantee the best. Now at this juncture, I appreciate every other comment. I'm having over 30 comments on my chat. I may not be able to read all of them, but I really, really appreciate Wekesa and the rest who've uh, commented, they say, Thanks, Mr. Jamlik. That is great information. Others are saying um, in the physical trait evaluation, maybe next time you give an illustration. For example, the stature, what is short with a score of one, what is a score of zero, what is a, that one has been handled. Uh, we are having comments like, thank you, Kagrik, thumbs up. This is good work. Um, we are also having comments like, uh, I'm satisfied, very good information uh, presented. So. Uh, we will keep on with this and let's keep on the spirit. One thing I can assure you, if we have to change Kenya, it all starts with me and you. It all starts with us getting the right information. It also starts with us ensuring that we make uh, production out there uh, at the optimum, at the best, so that we fight this thing uh, we are calling poverty and this thing we are calling food insecurity. At this juncture, I want to wind out and I will request uh, Dr. Wambugo to wind out for us. She will also tell us how you can contact Kagrik in case you're out there and you want to get uh, back to us. Thank you so much, Mr. Kibe and the team. The presentation was good. At least today we've understood about milk. Uh, some of us just think milk, eh? whatever we have on the bottle or whatever we have on the basket. But we've understood even factors that make your milk become better and good. So uh, thank you so much, Kibe. That was great. That was awesome. And thanks, panelists, for standing in together with me. Uh, that was a great one. And welcome all. Uh, Dr. Karibu, for you to wind out for us. And kindly, you can give our contacts. We also have the contacts for Kenya uh, Livestock Breeders Association. We also have the uh, contacts for KVB. Thank you, Abdi, for staying with us uh, from KVB. Uh, we really appreciate that's a recurring welcome. Thank you, Mary, for ably moderating the session. We want to also thank greatly um, Mr. Nampu for ably uh, presenting the, the topic for the day. And we also thank uh, Kibe for presenting to us uh, about milk testing. Uh, I take this opportunity to salute all the participants. Sitting for three hours is no joke. And we also celebrate each one of you because this has been the largest uh, uh, registration that we got over and above what we've been getting in the last uh, nine sessions. This was our 10th. So we salute all of you. And we also take this opportunity to thank the people who are, are, are logging in outside Kenya, that is Uganda, USA, and any other country that I may have left out, we thank you all for making time to be part of this great session. Uh, we are almost coming to an end, but uh, 
next week will be our last session. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we had a small hitch, but we want to have a rerun so that you can appreciate what it what it entails to be to do farm record keeping. So next week will be our most our last final session that we have for this webinar series. Um, like Mary said, you can always get our products um, through our substation. We have our substation uh, in Kirinyaga, Sotik, Eldoret, Nyahururu, and Chuka. We also have a sales outlet in Kabete. So we are working closely with 69 appointed agents countrywide. So in the event that you require more information, get in touch with us through info at kagrit.co.ke. For the catalog, kindly check out our website. It is available. For those who manage to attend this session, we'll ensure that a copy of the catalog is sent to your email based on the details we received at the registration. Mine is to continue urging you to support Kagrit and the Kenyan genetics. Let us not talk about uh, local genetics. It's not local. When, you, when people are out there, they call it imported. So let us support our own. Let's build Kenya. Uh, let's buy Kenya and build Kenya. So we are flashing our products and services. So at your own time, kindly get in touch with us. If there's anything that you're missing, Kagrit is a one-stop shop for cement, liquid nitrogen, and other AI accessories. Uh, at that point, uh, this juncture, I would want to ask to wind up with the words of the grace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. 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 the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, with us now and, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, Thank you. and have yourself a great time. Goodbye and see you next week at 10.30. Thank you. Let's meet next week, same time here.